Hello there, it's Pastor Maria from St. Paul Lutheran Church on U.S. Highway 40 in Altamont. Welcome to our Wednesday devotional time. Uh, we are, are nicely refreshed from the rain and the fair is underway and there's a beautiful breeze out there today. I hope that you're able to get outside today and enjoy some sunshine and the breeze. I had someone the other day say to me, I love it when you read a children's story for devotional time. And so I just decided today we're going to have story time. And so I pulled a book off of the shelf that I have not read, read, read in some time. And uh, I gave this book as a gift to my son on Easter in 2003. So it has special meaning for me. This is called Hermie, a Common Caterpillar. The book is written by uh, Pastor Max and Cato, and it is illustrated by Glueworks Animation. Let's see what we learn about Hermie the Common Caterpillar. Wow, said Hermie the Caterpillar as he tilted his head and looked up the tree above him. A beautiful butterfly was resting on a large green leaf. His brightly colored wings were covered with dazzling white spots. Pretty butterfly. Hermie held his breath and whispered to himself, he's about to fly. And with a lift of his wings, he was in the air, circling softly in the summer sky. Oh, how I'd love to fly like that, Hermie wished. He watched until the butterfly was a speck in the sky. Then Hermie sighed and turned away. Now, as a rule, caterpillars aren't very exciting. I find them in my house. But Hermie was even more ordinary than most. Some caterpillars have spots not Hermie. Some caterpillars have stripes, not Hermie. He had nothing but smooth green skin and a bunch of feet. Hermie was a common caterpillar. Hermie ate common leaves, squirmed through common grass, did common stuff. Hermie was a common caterpillar. Hermie did one thing, however, that was uncommon. He talked to God. He talked to God about all sorts of things, and God would talk back to Hermie. Of course, he didn't really hear God out loud. God spoke to his heart. Late at night, when the other caterpillars were asleep, Hermie would crawl out from his bed and stare at the sky and talk to God. God why did you make me so common? Other caterpillars have stripes. Some have spots. I even saw one with spots and stripes. But me, I don't have everything. I'm just Hermie. And I'm just wormy, said a nearby voice. Hermie turned and saw a caterpillar that looked like him. No spots, no stripes, another common caterpillar, his friend, Wormy. Once Hermie had told the other caterpillars that he talked to God, they laughed. But not Wormy. He understood. That's how they became friends. Wormy talked to God, too. When Hermie and Wormy felt common, God would tell them, don't worry, I love you both just the way you are, and I'm not finished with you yet. And so they would feel better for a while, <clears throat> but then something else would happen and they would feel common again, like the day they met an ant. The ant was smaller than either of them, 
but on his shoulder was a big pine cone. They were amazed at the strength of the ant. My, Wormy explained, exclaimed, how do you carry such a big load? That's how God made me. God made me strong. And off marched the tiny ant with the big load. That night, Hermie and Wormy asked God, why can't we be strong like the ant? We could never do what he could. Why did you make us so common? God's answer was the same as always. Don't worry, Hermie and Wormy. I'm not finished with you yet. I'm giving you a heart like mine. And they felt better, at least until they saw a snail. One afternoon, the sky opened up and the rain drenched the ground and two friends hurried as fast as they could to find a dry place. Suddenly, they heard a low, scratchy voice. Looks like you're in a hurry. Hermie and Wormy stopped. They looked all around but saw no one. Did you hear something, Hermie asked? I did, Wormy replied. That's when Hermie saw the head of a snail peeking out of its shell. Look, Wormie, over there by that rock. Greetings, said the snail. Looks like you're trying to get out of the rain. We surely are, Hermie answered. We're getting soaked. You need a house like I have, said the snail. That's your house, Wormy asked. It sure is, watch. And with that? The snail pulled his head into his shell. See, it's nice and dry in here. I take my house with me everywhere I go, his voice echoed. The two friends were discouraged. They wondered why God hadn't given them a neat house like the snails. Later that night, when the rain had passed and everyone else was asleep, Hermie and Wormy asked God why God gave the snail such a neat house and them nothing at all. Why do we have to be so common? they wanted to know. Again, God's answer was kind and patient. Don't worry, Hermie. Don't worry, Wormy. I love you both, and I'm not finished with you yet. So they felt better, and for a long time, just thinking about how much God loved them made Hermie and Wormy feel special and not so common until... Things can happen next. Oh, one day they saw a ladybug. Oh, what beautiful black spots she had. Neither of the caterpillars had ever seen such perfect spots. Jet black and exact circles. You have such pretty spots, Hermie explained. Gorgeous, Wormie agreed. Oh, thank you, she shouted softly. Then the ladybug blushed because she was very shy. I mean it, Wormy continued. We've never seen anyone with such beautiful spots. You are very kind, she replied. But I had nothing to do with it. This is the way God made me. Hermie and Wormy wanted to be grateful for the gift God had given the ladybug. But it was hard. Both of them felt so That night, underneath the bright stars, Hermie prayed, God, we know you are good and wise. We know you love us just as we are. We don't understand why you made us like this. 
we are so very common. Dodd finished the sentence. Yes, common. Both caterpillars said at the same time. Remember, God told them, I love you just the way you are, but I'm not finished with you yet. I'm giving you a heart like mine. Hermie sighed. He wanted to feel better. He tried to feel better. Usually he did feel better, but that night he still felt sad. He also felt tired, very tired, more tired than usual. next. Why is Hermie so tired? Wormy, he told his friend, I'm so very sleepy. I feel like I need to sleep a long time. Then let's make you a soft, comfy bed. It took them a while to find just the right leaf. There, Wormy said to his friend, have a good long rest. I'll be waiting for you when you wake up. Hermie thanked his friend, then he prayed to God and said, You know, God, it's okay that I'm just a common caterpillar. You love me, and that makes me special. Hermie snuggled into his bed, closed his eyes, and drifted off to sleep. You know, caterpillars made blankets out of leaves. Cool. As he slept, he dreamed that he was different. He had strength like an ant. He had a house like a snail. He had spots like a ladybug. He dreamed that he was no longer a common caterpillar, but that he had something special. sleeping upside down. Interesting. After what seemed like a long time, he woke up. He thought he had slept through the day and into the night because everything around him was dark. He was covered from head to toe. What had happened to his comfy bed? He wiggled and squirmed to get out. And when he did, is that? He and his bed began to fall. Suddenly his bed cracked open and Hermie felt a tickle on his back. Something wonderful happened. Wings fluttered open, wings he didn't even know he had. They were glorious, wide, brightly colored wings with beautiful spots and they were his. With hardly any effort, Hermie began to fly up and up, higher and higher. That's when Hermie realized what God had done. Now he understood God had made Hermie special inside and out. What a beautiful letter. He wasn't like the ant or the snail or the ladybug. He was unique, one of a kind. No one else was exactly like him. He was Hermie, a beautiful butterfly with a beautiful heart. He soared high through the air to the right and to the left. Then he thought of his friend Wormy. From the air, Hermie looked down at his broken bed. Nearby were the ant, the snail, and the ladybug. They were all talking to Wormy. As Hermie floated downward, he could hear Wormy saying, I don't know what happened to Hermie. He was asleep in his special bed and now I can't find him. Wormy, came a voice from high in the sky. Wormy heard his friend's voice and was excited. Hermie, where are you? I'm up here.
Wormy looked up. Hermy, is that really you? Yes, it's really me. Wow, said the ant, you look so different. Goodness, gasped the snail, you are so big. Gracious, admired the ladybug, you are the most beautiful butterfly I've ever seen. God was not finished with me after all, Hermie announced. Then he flew down and stopped right next to Wormy. He gave a big butterfly grin and whispered, Wormy, God loves you just the way you are. But guess what? God is not finished with you either, my friend. You don't think so? I know God's not. You know, you might be right. I'm starting to feel pretty sleepy too. Wormy yawned a big yawn. Hermie smiled a big smile. What do you think happened to Wormy? Hmm, maybe that's a good discussion to have at home or with a friend there. I'm willing to bet that Wormy also becomes a beautiful butterfly because that's what caterpillars do. They become beautiful butterflies. Here's what I love about this story. Several messages in it. Number one, God loves us just the way we are. Just the way we are. Whether we are short or tall, fat or skinny, whether we are children or adults, whether we are working or not working, whether we are men or women or children, whether we are cats or dogs or cows or pigs, God loves all of creation. And God's not done with any of us yet. What does that mean? It means that every day of our lives, we are growing into the person that God intended for us to be. Whether it be growing older in age, whether it be growing in maturity, whether it be uh, growing up and learning new things, whether it be growing from uh, our spiritual maturity from one place to another. God is not finished with any of us yet. We can feel pretty common, especially when we compare ourselves to others, just like Hermie and Wormy did. They coveted the strength of the ant. They coveted the snail who had a beautiful home. They wanted to be something different than what they were. And every day they spoke to God. That's like prayer. When we talk to God, we pray to God and we thank God for what we have. And well, if we're honest with ourselves, we may ask God for the things that we don't have. We may confess to God how we wish we were like others. We wish we looked differently, like the beautiful ladybug with the perfect spot. We may talk to God about why uh, we don't have all of the things that other people have, like the snail with his own beautiful home. We may talk to God about all the times where we feel like we've been beaten up and struck down and we are weak and weary and tired and we're it's hard to believe that an ant can have so much strength and carry such a heavy load. God gives us all different gifts. God creates us as unique people. And God transforms our hearts and our minds every day. I love butterflies. Do you? Every time I see a butterfly, I am reminded of my life. Because if we take the process of which a caterpillar becomes a chrysalis, wrapped into that cocoon, sleeping, becoming a butterfly, and then breaking out of that shell and becoming a beautiful butterfly to fly away, 
that's what happens with us. Maybe we don't have grow wings to fly, but perhaps we enter a new stage of life where we have broken through darkness and into light, where we have grown to be comfortable with who we are and who God created us to be. And that's really when we can spread our wings and soar and fly. God loves you just the way you are. And God is not done with you yet. I also want to add that God loves the person who you struggle to have a good relationship with. And God's not done with them yet either. God loves every single thing in this world. God may not appreciate the choices we make or the things that we do, but God loves us. And God is not done with us. I'm clinging to that today. I'm clinging to that today to remember that when I become frustrated with uh, who I am or who someone else is, when I focus more so on my sins or the way other people have sinned, that I'm forgetting that God is not done with us yet. And that is where grace enters in. Grace is for us all. Every single living creature. So my dear friends in faith, remember, no life is really common. No life is really ordinary because with God, everything is extraordinary. Love who you are. Love the people around you. And trust and know and be challenged to think of the stages that a butterfly goes through before it spreads its wings to fly. And trust and know that God is not done with you yet or anyone around you. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh God. You make beautiful things. You make beautiful things out of us. Yet some days we cannot see the beauty in ourselves. We cannot see the beauty in others. Instead, we get so focused on the things that we do not have, the things that we cannot see. Forgive us. Forgive us when we get too focused on ourselves and what the world shows us instead of focusing on you. Fill us with your hope and trusting and believing you are not done with us yet. That you transform hearts and you transform minds and you transform lives every day. Let our lives be in your hands. Let us wait for that transformation. Let us feel your love this day and every day. Amen. Dear beautiful people out there watching this video, whether you are uh, mature or young or less mature, um, whether you are watching this alone or with someone else, it's good to be with you today. God loves you, and so do I. I would love to uh, meet you sometime in person if we have not met yet. I invite you to join us here at St. Paul for worship at 830 in the morning um, on U.S. Highway 40 in Altamont. And uh, we also offer online worship, which is recorded and usually posted later on Sundays. Take good care, my friends. If you're in the area, enjoy the fair. If you're out of the area, watch for God at work in this world.